This is Brian Townsend for Cardrunners.com. Um, I'm doing a 1-2 Pot Limit Omaha video on Full Tilt Poker. Uh, playing heads up against hunting Queen 4 offsuit. Um, <coughs> I'm doing this video for content share between Card Player TV and Cardrunners. Um, <coughs> So I don't know who this player is, and I've been playing with him for a little bit. And he seems generally passive, uh, like a pretty reasonable player. And he knows who I am from the chat, it sounds like. So uh, he's probably not going to give me as much credit as some other opponents might. Um, so one thing I want to notice is what type of hands he's limping with on the button. So he's limping with a pair and kind of a weaker flush draw. Uh, here, top two, it's standard continuation bet. I would make that bet with a whole wide range of hands, uh, pretty much my entire range there, if my opponent was reasonably passive, which this one is. Uh, here with some more connected cards, I'll make a call. This is a loose call. Um, I, I would say that... Um, Calling there is pretty marginal with a hand like that. Um, it just doesn't play all that well. You're out of position. Um, it's really hard to flop a big hand that you want to go with, and that's kind of what you're looking to do. Uh, again, I'm flopping top two. It makes it easy to bet. Uh, here at Insta Min Raise, uh, this player has played me very passively, and I don't really know what to make of this. Um, I don't want to shove just yet because there are a lot of hands that I'm kind of behind. Um, you know, any top pair with a flush draw and stuff like that, I'm behind. So I'm going to call and I'm going to see a turn, see what he does. He just snap bet, snap check min raised, which to me generally means he doesn't have uh, that big of a hand. Um, so w when somebody doesn't really think about it and they just instantly check min raise, um, they've kind of determined what they're going to do beforehand. And I usually put them on kind of a mid-range type hand. Hand they like, but isn't just a stone cold, you know, killer hand. Uh, so here, here I'm going to put all the money in. Um, you know, top three pair. Uh, you know, heads up, this, this is a strong hand. I wish I had a flush or straight draw to go with it. It's some extra equity, but uh, shoving here is pretty reasonable. And he didn't snap call, which is nice. So... Um, I think I'm ahead. I think he would have called by now with a set. Um, I doubt he has a set of fives, so set of threes would be the only thing. That, and I think he would have already have called. So I, I'm pretty confident I'm ahead. Um, and hopefully he calls with a weak draw or something that I'm way ahead of. But we'll have to see. Here I'm up about half a buy-in on him already. Uh, again, I didn't flop much, but it's a scary board and I'm in a continuation bet. Uh, this hand's total garbage. Do not want to be defending with it. Um, that's one thing in heads-up play that I really feel that you should be doing and you know a lot of people play very differently than I do but out of position you want to in my opinion you should play very tightly um, and in position you can play a lot more hands so here's a perfect example of a hand I would raise all day long on the button but out of position I would never defend even though my pot odds are actually better um, so that's a hand again I would open with from the button but I wouldn't defend with it. Uh, trips I won't open with the play anytime. In Omaha, trips are just garbage. Sometimes I'll play uh, trip aces with a flush draw, but that's about it. Um, so here's a hand that I would never play out of position in a heads-up game against anybody. Uh, but in position, it's worth opening. Uh, because again, you do have position and you have the initiative and things like that are worth a lot. In, big bet poker games. 
it's not qu quite worth as much in uh, a limit game, but in a big bet poker game, it's really worth a lot. Here's another hand. This hand was much stronger than the hand I just played, but um, playing it out of position will be unprofitable in my opinion. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it away. Um, that's about the tightest fold though I'll make. If that hand had been a little stronger, I would have played it. So here, to re-illustrate that point, this hand is much weaker than the one I was playing, but I'm more inclined to play it because I have position. Uh, this player has been playing very passively. He's been folding way too many flops, and players who are going to do that, I'm just going to keep firing. Um, here we got Checkman raised again. If you notice, uh, he took a little more time to think about it. He he still made a pretty quick check min raise, but there w it wasn't just like an instant like without thinking. So here with bottom pair, uh, no draw. I guess I have a gut shot, but calling another ten in Omaha is uh, burning up money essentially. Here's a medium strength ace's hand. Uh, he just min raised, so I'm going to repot him. Um, and I'm going to make a continuation bet. Against this player, I feel like he's passive enough and not tricky enough to where he's not raising me without um, a big hand. I don't really know what to make of this, so I'm just going to go ahead and call. Um, if I'd played more with this player, I would be able to shove or do other things. Um, Right now I'm just going to see a turn. And that completes a bunch of the straight draws, so if he puts in a substantial bet, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be an easy pass here. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not beating much that he would have. Um, you know, there's players in situations where I would just repop a flop there against some players who uh, I would, you would do that with a very wide range. But against this player, he's played reasonably tight, so... Uh, here's a nice spot. I'm going to bet if I get raised on the flop, I'll have an easy toss, and I'd be betting a lot of turns there. Uh, a lot of good turns for me to bluff. Any any diamond I would be betting, um, any bottom pair card pairing I'd be betting, you know, just, just a lot of hands there. Uh, this player seems to be playing a lot of hands out of position, which uh, I advocate not doing. And as you can see, he's having to give up um, on a lot of flops, and he's kind of hemorrhaging his money on a lot of the flops, where I'm not really hitting, but I'm just continuation betting and picking up the pot. Uh, here he checked. Hmm. That jack's a tough card. Um, I'm not going to bet it, because if I get raised, I'm going to have to throw away my hand. If I just had something like ace-queen, or just any other hand that... <laughs> I didn't want to have to throw away, I would have bet it, but uh, with this hand, I don't want to have to throw it away. And he was drawing to two outs, so more or less than that, because the heart was no good, uh, so no big deal. So one thing I want to notice about this player is he's, and I'm going to bet every single flop every single time, he's just playing too many hands out of position and he's not raising me enough. Uh, here the flush draw came, it was a non-nut flush draw, so it's tempting to bet, but I also made top pair, so I might be able to outdraw like a two pair type hand with a jack three or four, and there I made a straight, um, I think my hand's good, but, but value betting's tough, um, he might have a small flush, like a seven high flush, I don't see him calling much, uh, with like king nine or king deuce or ace king. And there you go, he's going to check call with the 10 high flush, so value betting there would have been a little too thin. Um, here, these queens are just garbage. Uh, not worth raising. Um, but now I probably have the best hand, so we'll find out real quick. Um, so I was, I was making a point about something, but seems to have slipped my mind. 
Oh, uh, that. So in this hand, uh, there was something very interesting that happened here. It connected single suited kings on the pot. He's opening it up. Um, So what an important thing I need to gather from this hand is that my opponent with a hand with no showdown value didn't continuation bet. A pair of fours on this flop or that turn in Omaha uh, is, is just never going to be winning. I mean, it's, it's almost inconceivable. So his hand has almost no showdown value, yet he still opted to just check it down. So that's something interesting that I like to know because what a lot of players will do is with a hand with a little bit of showdown value excuse me a hand with a little bit of showdown value would be like a king queen type of hand on that board and a king queen on that type of board would you know beat a lot of hands and people but it couldn't stand a raise or anything so a lot of times people check those on those boards this isn't the case with this player. So what I want to do is every single time he checks the flop, I want to bet the turn. Because he's not trying to show down a weak made hand or anything like that. He's just got junk, and I can win the pot with a bet. So uh, without fail, I'm going to be betting. Every time he checks the flop, I'm going to be betting the turn until I uh, realize that he... Um, until I realize that he's uh, adjusting to that, because it's a pretty easy strategy to adjust to. I hear the straight flush draws all got there. No reason to try to bluff him, remove him off his hand. I mean, it's very unlikely I'm good. It's very likely as a flush. I, I think he'll call with a flush. I think he's in check call mode like he was with those tens. Um, and also I have some showdown value, you know? My king queen, well, on that board, it's never good, but uh, I, I don't think trying to move him off that flush there is going to be a winning play. But then again, I haven't played that much with him, so I don't really know. Okay, um, I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this was Brian Townsend for CardRunners.com.